Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's video. So in today's lecture, we are going to be going over reflexes. So what a reflex is, is when you, for example, when you touch a hot pan, you pull your arm away right away. You actually do all of that before your brain is informed of you touching that hot pan. So all of this works through the spinal cord. Um, so we're going to talk about the components of a reflex arc today. So how does it work through the spinal cord? And then we'll look at some specific examples of reflexes as well. All right, so first, the components of a reflex arc. The first thing you have is you have some sort of receptor out here. Say you're touching a hot pan. You activate a receptor in your fingertips, a thermo receptor, so it senses heat, that then sends the signal up the sensory neuron through the dorsal root ganglion, so it's a unipolar neuron coming through. It then enters the spinal cord. Remember, out here is the white matter, and in here is the gray matter. Um, so in the spinal cord, it will synapse. So here we have the receptor. So out here is the receptor. Then here's the sensory neuron. So sensory neuron, and now we get into the integration center, which is the gray matter of the spinal cord. In the integration center, we go through an interneuron. So this is part of the reflex arc. So there's an interneuron. So it's in between two neurons, interneuron. And then, oh, I'm covering up the receptor I drew. There, let's move it up to there. See, I drew an R. Um, and then we output, so you when you, pull away from something, you're activating muscles. So you're activating a motor neuron that then outputs out the ventral side of the spinal cord and then goes out to the skeletal muscle. There's my, my muscle. And that is known as the effector because this is, again, the exiting pathway. So that's the components here. So Something needs to sense something, so then you need to send that stimulus up the sensory neuron via action potentials getting to the integration center. Then in the integration center, you control that reflex. At the same time, you have um, branches that comes off and would be going up the ascending tracks and going to inform the brain that you indeed touch something hot. But like I said, you've already reflex out to this effector here prior to your brain being informed of the situation. And it, think about why this makes sense in terms of evolution, because you want to withdraw away from dangerous things. You don't want to be holding on to something hot or dangerous for too long. So that's the basic components. Now it can get more complex than that. So we're going to go over a few examples of spinal reflexes. The first example here is called a stretch reflex. So by stretch, it's talking about your muscles stretching. It's also known as the knee jerk reflex because it's what helps you stay standing. Uh, makes it so your knees don't buckle when you stand. So inside your muscles, uh, we haven't really talked about this much, but you have a device or thing called the muscle spindle. So you have sensory neurons inside the muscle. And when your muscle stretches, say, say I move to the right side here. When I move to the right, my left erector spinae muscles begin to stretch. And then that's sensed, and then I reflex back to straight. So when I've been sitting here, I've been keeping normal posture and so forth. I don't have to think about maintaining my posture all the time. If you ever stretch a little bit to either side, it brings you back center. Now, through conscious effort and so forth, you can screw up your posture. So if you're on your phone too long or something like that, you can change your posture. So it's always good to do posture checks, as they say. Also, when you're standing, you have the knee jerk reflex. So you don't think about the muscles you need to contract in order to stay standing, you're just standing. So any wobbles and things like that to either side, you have this muscle stretch reflex that's constantly helping you stay up and standing and maintain your posture. Um, so that's the stretch reflex. Next example here is called the flexor or withdrawal reflex. Uh, this one's a little smaller, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can read this. Oops, that drew a line. So that's fine though. So this is, we've all had this little knee tap done to us. And what's the purpose of that? The purpose of doing that little test is to check your cord integrity or in like myelination during development and also the formation of neuromuscular junctions. So 
it's looking at those neuromuscular junction formations. So when you get that little tap, um, this is also showing a stretch reflex here mixed with this tap, but your leg comes back to the normal spot then afterwards, and that's what this image is sort of talking about. But here, when you do that tap, you have a sensory neuron coming in, going through, and then you see it exciting one muscle and inhibiting another muscle. So when you pull your leg away, or let's say we pull away from a hot pan. So this is the withdrawal reflex. This is the painful one where you move away from a painful source or something that hits you. Um, I'm contracting my biceps. I'm extending my triceps. So I have to send an excitatory signal here and an inhibitory signal here to the opposing muscle group. So here it's known as polysynaptic. So multiple synapses form here in the interneurons. It's not just, so the integration center gets a little bit more complex in here within the gray matter. So that's a flexor or withdrawal reflex. So that's simple pulling away real quick when something hits you. Now, it can get a little bit more complex here for something called the crossed extensor reflex. So you could, this, Example, I like to, here we'll zoom out so we can see the whole picture here is when you step on something sharp. Say you're at the beach, and by the way, I do a lot of beach metal detecting, and walking barefoot on the beach is a bad idea. There's a lot of rusty nails and sharp things out there for you to step on. So this individual here has stepped on something sharp at the beach. What happens when you step on something sharp at the beach? You bring that leg up and you put the other leg down. So that reflex not only has to go to one side of the body, it has to go to the other side. That's known as being ipsilateral, meaning it crosses over the gray commissure right here. So he, then think about what needs to happen. You bring your one leg up. So you're contracting your hamstrings and extending your quads, whereas the other leg, you're contracting the quads and extending the ham, or the hamstring. So excited, exciting and inhibiting opposing muscle groups. So here you have the pain signal come up. So there's a sensory neuron coming in and the integration center right here is now far more complex. So in the end now you have an excitatory and an inhibitory event going to those muscle groups. Now it's not one neuron going out, you have multiple motor neurons going out, but then it sends a signal and you reflex away. Again, there's also would be the path going up that says you stepped on something. Now, one interesting thing with reflexes here, so we've all gotten a shot before, an injection. If you weren't paying attention, you would reflex away from that. However, your brain, your cortex can override reflexes. If you are ready for something, you can do something. So if for some reason you wanna walk across a hot bed of coals, your brain can override your reflexes to jump off that hot bed of coals if you really wanted to. Now, I wouldn't recommend that though. And then some other reflexes we have are these superficial reflexes, which are involved in little light touches. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the plantar reflex and abdominal reflex. Now, these ones are used clinically to test for uh, cord, so spinal cord integrity at different parts of the vertebral column to see if there's been any damage, looking that maybe there's uh, primary motor cortex damage and so forth. Maybe if there's ventral horn damage, it just, it can test and try to figure out if there's an issue. The plantar reflex is when you do this light touch in the plantar region or bottom of the foot. When you do that, the toes are supposed to curl downwards. Actually, when babies are developing, up until they're one year old, they don't do this and they do something where the toes flail out instead and go like this. Because the myelination of those nerves going down, so the sciatic nerve going down to that plantar region isn't fully developed yet. Remember, myelination is the lipid cord, like rubber insulation around a neuron. So it doesn't have this reflex fully developed yet. Now, if this happens to an adult, um, sorry, this is in a different language here, but Babinski is the same spelling. It's called Babinski's sign. Uh, Babinski's sign is where the toes will flail out. And so it's checking myelination levels um, for that sciatic nerve. And also one here, I don't have an image for it, but the abdominal reflex. So in the abdominal region, so the belly button or umbilicus is in the middle. If you do light touches towards the umbilicus, the belly button should move towards that light touch. And if it doesn't, it, 
su suggesting something's wrong with the spinal cord integrity in certain cord regions. Um, so there's a whole bunch of these different tests um, where you do a light touch and there should be a reflex action that happens somewhere in the body and you could check to make sure the nerves are working right. All right, that's a quick and dirty summary of reflexes. And if you have any questions, uh, please reach out and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. All right, have a great day and bye-bye.